Welcome everyone. This is the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley. And every week we try to bring you speakers who are going to allow you to see the world in some new way. Our club has a specific interest in issues of education, entrepreneurship, and innovation. We're going to touch on all three of those today with, with our speaker. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time, the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley is part of Rotary International, a group of 1.2 million people in, in 36,000 clubs around the, goal, around the globe. And, and our, our goal is just to improve our communities, to find ways locally, globally, and digitally to make life better for others. So our speaker today is David Plotz. He is, uh, he is an interesting guy on all sorts of fronts. I first encountered him through the work he does as a part of the Slate Political Gab Fest that he does with John Dickerson uh, of, of CBS. Uh, and Emily Bazelon of the New York Times and Yale University Law School. And he, he has done all sorts of interesting work. He was the CEO of Atlas Obscura. And he, uh, he is also someone who is, is a writer. He has put together books. And if you have not seen in, in, the, uh, in the bio what, uh, what books he's written, you can bet then you'll, you'll learn soon enough because we're gonna ask him about him for sure. So with that, David, I am so happy to have you here. Welcome to the Rotary E Club of Silicon Valley. Thank you so much. It's uh, lovely to be here. And I am looking forward to talking to you about CityCast and then about anything else you guys want to talk about. So I come to you uh, as the CEO of a new company called CityCast. CityCast is a national network of daily local news podcasts and newsletters. The opportunity that we saw when we launched this a little more than a year ago was that local news is weakening, especially newspapers, uh, but cities are not. Cities are very strong, cities are thriving. And we thought that if we built a great network of podcasts in cities, podcasts that, as I'll talk about, really help people feel more connected to their city, that we could make a mark in the media landscape, we could build a really great business, we could make people feel more connected to their city, and uh, get a chance to dominate a new medium, the streaming audio medium, which had not yet taken hold in local news. Um, so we currently have three uh, city casts that are daily. We have in Chicago and Denver and uh, Houston, daily local podcasts and daily local newsletters. We also have in Salt Lake City, a podcast that's gonna go daily next week. And in Pittsburgh, a podcast and newsletter that will go daily in a couple of weeks. We were also about to launch in Las Vegas, uh, Washington DC and Boise. And by the end of this year, we expect to be in about 20 cities across the US. I wanna talk a little bit, let me if I can get the slides to move, there we go. So the mission of CityCast is to make podcasts and newsletters that connect people with their cities. So we do not see ourselves as, as taking the place of newspapers or of uh, even TV news in the news ecosystem. Uh, we are relatively thinly staffed. So we have uh, in, in, in Denver, we have a team of four and in Salt Lake City, we have a team of three that's doing this work. We don't have a city hall reporter. We don't have a transportation reporter. What we're doing is much more akin to what you, uh, it's much more akin to what maybe an old time newspaper columnist, what a Jimmy Breslin used to do that each day we focus on one story in the city and we bring a lot of voice and opinion and feeling to our focus on that one story. So our host, who is usually someone who's got, who's deeply charismatic, deeply, you know, deeply enmeshed in their city, extremely passionate about their city, will talk to somebody else in the city who is involved in the big story of that day and attempt to offer in this conversation, a take, a position, a feeling, uh, a, a kind of intensity about what has happened and, and that the, that day's podcast will function in kind of the way that old timey newspaper column used to do, which is that it's gonna be, I, I like to think of it as that CityCast, is, CityCast hosts are the, the people who, who 
love their city more than anybody else. And they think it's more fucked up than anybody else does. And they are able to convey both that love and that fucked up upness at the same time and in podcast form. Um, the podcasts are distributed weekly morning, weekly uh, by 6 a.m. local time. And it's a weekday podcast at the moment. We don't do anything on weekends. They're less than 20 minutes long. The newsletters, um, which I'll get to a little bit, uh, newsletters are really the, the, the podcasts are the hero product and the newsletters are more a secondary product. The newsletters are also uh, morning, weekday. Um, I think the, the thing that is, uh, and, and actually I should note that every podcast also ends with a short uh, newscast. So it's, you, you do get this take on the story of the day and big story, but you also have a, you do get the news at the end of the podcast, but it doesn't function. It's not like NPR where you can tune in at the top of the hour and you'll know you'll get the, the headlines. The other you know, thing about podcasting is of course the podcasts are time shifted so that people, I'm about to have a cat here. Um, okay, um, sorry. Uh, that people are, um, people, you don't know when someone's gonna listen to CityCast. So even though we drop it at 6 a.m. each morning, you probably won't listen to it till 8 a.m. at the earliest. You might not get to it till five o'clock or you might not even get to it till two days later because you look, look back and realize, oh yeah, they had a really great discussion about the I-610, uh, about, the, about the guy who biked around the 610 loop in Houston and you know what his, what his experience was. And you, you don't get a chance to, to listen to it till, till days later. And as a result, it's very hard to be super timely with a podcast. You can't know that people are going to listen to it in the moment, the way you know when you put something on the radio that anyone who's got it tuned to that station, that frequency is going to hear it. So the, the news, we quickly realized that being extremely up to date on the news wasn't possible or even necessarily desirable. It's much more important to be, to feel like the story that you're listening to, it doesn't have to be relevant at this minute, but it does have to be relevant at that day or that week. Um, the, uh, this is just more, more notes on sort of the nature of the, the way the podcast works. Um, they're, one of the things I really want to note is that they're extremely local. They're extremely, extremely devoted to their cities. So a lot of times if you are in, in a, a city and you listen to the local NPR station, they'll have the NPR national news, but they'll ha also have a local talk show. That local talk show sometimes is very local, but sometimes it's kind of like, we're going to talk about technology. It's going to be Tech Tuesday, and it will not feel like it is really attached to the city that day. Every city cast is designed to be attached to that city that day so that you, you, when you listen to it, you should feel like, oh yeah, this has something to do with how I live here in Salt Lake today. Not necessarily that it is, you know, it is the most necessarily the, the, the biggest story in the news that day, but it will feel relevant to your life in Salt Lake that day. Um, I think one of the things that we really emphasize is that podcasting is a, as a medium is incredibly intimate. And because it's so intimate, it allows people to make very deep connections with it, um, much more so than print, much more so than television. Audio is this extremely human medium where your, your voice really makes the, 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 this, this emotional connection with people. And if you look across podcasting, you'll see that the most successful podcasts are not really necessarily informationally rich. They're emotionally rich. Podcasting is a kind of okay informational medium. Like, but if you wanted to learn about the budget of the city of San Francisco, a podcast would be a terrible way to do it because you would start to, they, someone would say, and they spent $37 million on buses and uh, $14 million on street repair. And, and you'd be like, wait, what? And then you couldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have it in front of you the way you do with something in print. But where podcasting really thrives is in this emotional connection that you make, the sense of community with the listener, with the, with the host, and the sense of, of, um, of um, emotional feeling. And so what we're generally trying to do is not so much be the great informational 
source that you need to, to conduct your life, but to be a source that makes you more connected to the city. Um, is it a business? We hope it's going to be a business. Right now, it's not a business. Right now, it's, it's really, we're just growth. We are trying to establish ourselves, stake a claim. There's a lot of competition in local journalism these days because you guys may know Axios. Has, Axios is investing tremendously in newsletters. Um, NPR local stations are doing pretty well. There's a bunch of local digital news startups in a lot of cities. Uh, in, in the Bay Area, there's Oakland side and Berkeley side, for example, which are very hyper local digital publications. And so we think that there will be also the same competition in local podcasting, and we're trying to be there first and best. Um, the, the business model ultimately is partly advertising. So we run ads on our podcasts, uh, which are usually read by our hosts. And then we also have ads in our newsletters. Uh, and we suspect that those, those ads, which are a mix of local and national ads, will probably be the vast majority, or not the vast majority, they'll be the majority of our revenue. But we'll also have a subscription model, which we'll probably roll out later this year in Denver and Chicago, which are two, two biggest and oldest cities. Uh, and that will ask people to say, pay $10 a month, $5 a month, $100 a year to be a member of CityCast and to get probably bonus episodes of the podcast, bonus newsletters, uh, maybe special access to events that we do. And we suspect that, that that subscription or membership revenue will end up being a third of, of the overall revenue. Um, but really the, the model is less, uh, is less um, if we build a loyal audience in each city of 10,000 daily listeners, 15,000 daily listeners, the business will work out. And if we can't build that loyal audience, the business will not work out. It's basically, so right now, all we're focused on is can we get new listeners in cities to give it a chance and to say like, oh, I want to add to my daily habit of podcast listening. I'm not just gonna listen to the daily from the New York Times anymore. I'm also gonna add CityCast because I, I live in Denver and I wanna, just in, in the way that you wanna know more about the world, you wanna know more about Denver. And so I'm gonna add CityCast Denver to, to my, my menu of podcast listening. Um, and fortunately, podcasting is this rapidly growing medium that more and more people are listening to podcasts every day. And uh, podcasting as a whole is incredibly crowded. It is a very crowded space and it's very hard to find a new podcast. So if you launch a new podcast, the chance of getting an audience is very low because everyone has a podcast. Probably half of you on this Zoom have a podcast. Um, but if you have a podcast which is relatively specialized, relatively narrow, and is, and is in a new space, there is a chance to grab audience. And we're already seeing that our marketing efforts in Denver and Chicago have really borne fruit already. So we're already seeing pretty good audience growth uh, from marketing. And we suspect that we can do that across our network and in city after city uh, as we as we grow. Um, I think I'll stop there. Uh, that's a brief introduction. I, I, as I said, I'm happy to talk about CityCast and this model for podcasting, its place in local journalism. I'm happy to talk about other forms of podcasting, which I've been doing this political podcast that Rushton mentioned for the I, We started at the year the word podcasting was coined. So it's that, that old, it's 16 years old. And then, uh, and then obviously I've done lots of work as at Atlas Obscura, at Slate, and in, in books that I'm happy to talk about as well. Uh, but thank you all, and, and uh, I look forward to your questions. Wonderful, David. Gonna... Thank you so much. And let's go ahead and have you stop sharing the screen for a minute. Exactly. And I'll introduce the different people that we have got on the recording. Uh, so when I call your name, if you would, just wave at the screen, uh, because that's a friendly thing to do. Uh, our, our members, uh, Rory Olson in, in Texas, Cecilia Babkirk in California, Christopher Major in California, Nick Lagarde in British Columbia, Shag Shagrin in California, Casper Meyer in Germany, and I am Rushton Hurley, I am in California. And so I'm going to start the questions as, as our, our, our group here begins to think about questions they may want to ask. But I, I think about, about what you've described as, as an intersection between storytelling 
and love of community. So the, the New York Times, the daily podcast is, as you mentioned, it's a tremendous podcast, wonderful, wonderful stories, but not focused on one community in a way like you described. And so, so in, in thinking about that storytelling piece, do you feel that the people who are working with you are people who have that joy that comes from a really well-told story? I mean, is, is, that, is that consciously a part of how you, you pick the people who become part of your organization? It is. Well, actually, uh, I'll give you an example of that, which is that when I was starting to hire for CityCast, I don't know if you've ever heard of a, there's a podcast called Snap Judgment. And Snap Judgment is a podcast that's done out of Oakland. And it's a storytelling podcast. Essentially, it's people telling incredible stories. And I called the host of Snap Judgment, who, who's a, an acquaintance of mine, Glenn Washington. And I said, who is the person you know who, who's been on Snap Judgment, who loves their city more than anybody else? And he gave me the, this name of a young man in Chicago named Jacoby Cochran. And Jacoby was this, at that point, wasn't, he wasn't a journalist. He was an actor and a storyteller in Chicago. And he became our Chicago host for exactly that reason. He's somebody who just like sees, he, he adores his city. He's deeply connected to his city. And then he sees it in terms of these kind of human beings and the lives they're leading. That said, I don't think that's the only I don't think that's the only model uh, because there are great storytellers, but you also, um, there's, a, there's another model, which in fact, we're kind of trying out right now, both in Salt Lake and I think our Washington DC podcast will be like this, uh, where you have people who are more like uh, great arguers. They're people who have a really strong, it's less that they have a great story to tell about the city, it's more they have a strong take on what's happening in the city. And I'm, I'm interested to see whether this model, which is more like evocative of conservative talk radio, honestly, than it is of NPR, whether that model will work for podcasting. Um, I'm interested, I'm curious, like we're gonna, we're, we're kind of gonna see, uh, we'll see soon. Fantastic, so our, our, our member in Houston, uh, Rory, asks a great question in the chat about the demographics of the audience. Uh, curious about that and how advertising rates are, are working for you as well. Yeah. So, uh, so by demographics, do you mean the kind of size of the audience or the kind of composition, like the age and race and things like that? Composition, you said. Composition. The composition is, um, uh, I mean, I will say that the audiences are small right now. So our largest podcast has about 4,000 listeners a day. So that's not, like, that's not a huge audience yet. Uh, and it has, uh, it's pretty split male, female, from what we can tell it's highly local. It's highly Denver focused. So, and this is true in all of our cities, even though you can listen to it anywhere in the world, the vast majority of people are not Denver people in exile. They're people who live right around whatever is happening, which is in contrast, actually, if you look at sports podcasting, a lot of, there are a lot of like Denver sports podcasts or Houston sports podcasts, but the audience for the sports podcast tends to be much broader because it's a lot of it is people who live elsewhere who are just still tuned to their local sports with the with a newsier thing it is does tend to be people who really live there um it's pretty white and even in cities where we have black hosts the audiences are pretty white um and it's like an npr crowd from what we can tell it's like that it's really well educated it's pretty liberal <sighs> liberal progressive but not like you can't I mean it's it's liberal progressive, but not more than cities themselves are liberal progressive, if you know what I mean. It's like cities themselves are pretty liberal progressive and our audience is pretty liberal progressive, but it's not, it's not, uh, it doesn't skew beyond that uh, from what we can tell, but it's sort of still sort of early days. And the ad, in terms of the ad rate, the ad rates are great. The ad rates are really good because in podcasting, you have this direct, so, so I'm not sure how many of you are podcast listeners, but in most podcasts, the hosts themselves do the ads. So it's a very kind of old timey, you know, 50s television kind of model of advertising. And that has a, uh, those ads are really effective because people trust the host. And so when the host is there doing the ad, it, it adds a, a level of trust to the ad, which maybe, I mean, I don't, I'm not here to say that that's merited, but it, whatever, it's there. Uh, and so the, ad, the ads are pretty effective and thus the ad rates are pretty high. Um, right now we are just, 
getting, we were just taking baby steps with ads. So we, we've only, you know, we only have like three or four clients at the moment, but hopefully it'll be a lot more. Roy, did you have a follow-up question on this? No, it answered my question. Thank Perfect. you. All right, Cecilia asked a question. Is anything like this happening that you know of in Europe? So anything similar in terms of localized podcasts? You know, there are there are some great localized podcasts in Europe, and and I, if you're actually, uh, if this is something you're interested in, there's a wonderful like 10 minute YouTube video <laughs> which I'll try to find and send to you, Rushton. Um, about a there's a small town in England which has a daily local podcast, which is incredible. Everyone, it's become it's a town that's so small it has no other news source. So it's maybe 800 people, a thousand people or something like that. And everyone listens to this podcast every day and it's become the de facto news source for the town. Uh, and and that, that was a wonderful, um, like that was a wonderful example, but that's not really a commercial. I mean, it was very much funded, you know, heavily subsidized by, by I don't know if it's a British government or the local government. In terms of um, as a business model, I have not heard of anything like this. And we've had, we've considered like, should we, already start to stake out something in in London or or uh, but we just decided uh, we it's too much for us to do but someone should someone should do it so incidentally like this is this is just like a and this is a totally separate point one of the things that we're noticing is that cities that are too big are probably not good for it but cities that are too big don't really have a sense of identity and a sense of kind of uh sense of community in the way that we think like a salt lake salt lake is is not nearly this city as big as chicago and yet people in salt lake are incredibly patriotic about salt lake in a way that we suspect will make them susceptible to this whereas chicago it's chicago is like not one city it's about 15 different cities and it might be too big to actually do a single podcasting of course they have a really cool flag in salt lake uh, in Chicago, not not inconsequential. Oh. So so that there there, there is a wonderful uh, uh, TED talk uh, by Roman Mars. Oh, about, Roman, about, yeah, yeah. About yeah. city flags. We were talking about Europe a minute ago, and our guest from Europe, Casper, has a question for you as well. So, Casper, go ahead and unmute. Yeah, thanks so much for the presentation. So so Casper, go ahead and, and type that into the chat for the minute. Um, can you can you hear me now? Oh, much better. Is it right better now? Okay, okay, okay. Micro microphone problem. Um, yeah, thanks so much for the presentation. Um, I'm definitely going to check it out. Is it better now? Okay, great. <laughs> um, just to see if I can feel this sort of emotional connection which you mentioned. Uh, maybe it works if you aren't from the city or helps to understand. You mentioned that the podcast helps people to feel more emotionally connected, and I was wondering if you can tell whether people act out on this new connection. Um, have you ever experimented with calls to action? Are there any sort of meetup, meetups around your audience? Um, could you tell whether you managed to breathe new life and sort of revive the public spirit of your listeners? That's a great question. We don't, as of yet, no, we don't know that. Um, but we've seen, so I, I just actually was on a call with my Houston team. So the Houston podcast, just started a month ago and it only has 600 listeners uh so it's a really small audience right now and they just did a call out um where they asked for people's stories about the 610 what is, what is it called uh, what is it called uh the, the 610 loop or whatever it is yeah it's the 610 loop yeah so they asked for people so there's this huge highway that, that rings houston called the 610 and so they asked for stories and out of 600 listeners, 30 people submitted stories. So one in every 20 people listening to the show submitted a story about their experience on the highway. So we thought like, wow, that this podcast is tiny. It's like not there yet, but the fact that that many people are connecting to it is a really great sign. So not good, but, but I think that's, a, I think your meetups is when, once COVID allows it, I think meetups will very much be something we want to do and and in person the in-person events because we as you're getting at like it's very important to actually for people to actually feel that um and one of one of the and just to, to belabor this question 
one of the things our newsletter does. I, I think our newsletter is a much less distinctive product than our podcast, but our newsletters focus on what you can do. So any item that we publish also has like, here's how you can be part of this. Here's how you can contribute. Here's how you can be a, you know, play a role in whatever it is. So it is, it's encouraging that whether people are, you know, it's causing people to donate more to this cause or be better volunteers or whatever it is. I, we don't know that yet. I it over to Nick in British Columbia. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm curious about, um, because you have all these statistics, I'm, I'm curious uh, because I've, uh, as I've observed the podcast world get bigger and bigger, and like you said, it's a very crowded space. Um, how, how do you, how do you, do you have a favorite medium? Because obviously Apple was the originator uh, with its iTunes and all that. However, there's so much out there. Is there, is there ways that you get better engagement or better data out of this? Or are there ways that you feel like, oh, I'm going to, we're going to get better growth because, or better engagement or, or word of mouth because we do it one way or the other. I mean, Apple is still very much the dominant uh, way people are getting their podcast. So, so if you look, it's, you know, 50, 60% of podcast listens come there. Spotify is growing. Um, I think the data tools, uh, there are data tools that we use that allow us to kind of get a little bit more insight. Uh, there's one called Pod Sites, which tracks advertising. Um, it tracks somebody, has someone heard an ad of ours and then come and listen to CityCast? And, and so you can, you can know how effective your advertising is uh, with Pod Sites. Um, and there's a program which is now owned by Spotify called Megaphone, which also is a pretty good data analytics platform. But one of the funny things about podcasting is that even though it's this, oh, it's this all digital medium, blah, 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 the data is actually really bad in part because it's just, it's kept so close to the vest by Spotify and by Apple in particular. And so you just don't, you actually know a lot less about your users than you do if you're sending emails to them. I, I guess that's why I was curious because um, in, in North America, Apple is predominant. However, when you think about events like other places, uh, I think of um, uh, you know iMessage in North America is predominant. However, obviously something like WhatsApp or, other, or Telegram or Signal are much more prevalent elsewhere in the world. Do you find that if you, would you have to change your methodology if you, if you went somewhere else? I don't know. Probably <laughs> too early. That's one reason. I mean, our CEO is or the CEO. So we're we're wholly owned by a company called Graham Holdings, and um, which is a really big. It used to be the Washington Post company. So the Washington Post company, uh, which owned the Washington Post newspaper, it sold to Jeff Bezos. But the left behind this huge family-owned conglomerate that owns just it owns crazy things. It owns so much stuff. But the CEO and I were talking about this, and he was basically like, "Look." Yes, I'm sure there's an opportunity outside of the U.S. for you, but really, if you haven't cracked it here, why would you take on that complication yet? So we're not going to take on that complication until we've cracked it here. We'll do one more question and then, and then wind down the recording. Uh, so, David, I think about what we do as, as a Rotary Club and, and connecting with people all over the world to tell us their stories, and we hope to help them essentially uh, broaden their, their work to improve communities through sharing the stories the way, the way we do it. One thing that we, we need to do, uh, but haven't yet, is to say, here is a collection of a dozen of our best recordings. So that, so that if you're trying to get a sense of like who we are and, and our, our programs, go here. Is there anything like that that allows someone wanting to get to know CityCast to be able to say, oh, there was this incredible story in Chicago or, or Salt Lake City or wherever it might be um, that, that, that would allow people to really get into that space of that, that's what I want out of. No, out of the that's a good idea. Space. That's a really good idea. We should have a best of like here, you're new to CityCast. Here's, here's like what, here's what you're going to get. I'm going to write that down. Here's my <laughs> While you're writing that down, I'll wind this down. Everyone, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it, is, it is always a pleasure for us uh, to be able to share the stories of the, the fascinating folks that we meet around the world. And uh, if you are a Rotarian visiting, 
then by successfully filling out the attendance form slightly down the page, uh, you, can, you can get an automated email that you can pass along to your, uh, your, your club secretary in, in order to get a makeup for a missed meeting. We also want you to notice that a little farther down the page, you will see our Discuss, D-I-S-Q-U-S forum, where people will share their thoughts about this program and other elements of the meeting, the inspirational video, the, the funny that Chags uh, gets together for us uh, each week, to learn something new that he also does, the, the power of images done by, by Keith Marsh and, and so much more. So we hope that you will engage with us that way and even respond to the comments that other people have left. As we always like to do, we hand it back to our speaker for a final word. So David, I hand it back to you for the final thought of the recording. Honestly, my final thought was I Discuss was a platform I used awesome. at Slate like 15 years ago and I wondered, I'm curious if it's still alive. I guess it's still alive. Uh, uh, my final thought is, um, I hope if you live in one of the cities that were launching CityCast, and it's, as I said, it's now five, but we'll hope to hopefully be in your city soon. Take a listen and, and please let me know directly, david.plots at citycast.fm, what you think of it and how we can improve it and, and how we are or are not capturing the, the feeling of your city. Wonderful. Everyone, we will see you next week.